Marlins off day, but no off days for Locked On Marlins. We are here getting into everything that happened in Philadelphia and looking ahead to the series in New York and asking some big, big questions. I have one man in the house to help me along the way. Takes what made us in the house. This one could be spicy as hell. Sit back, relax, enjoy at least 20 minutes of fire. Likely more on today's Locked On Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Marlins, your daily Marlins podcast with me, Peter Pratt. Of course, guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter or unblock me on Twitter at Miami Marlins underscore UK. It's the Thursday episode, guys, and it's an off day. The Marlins will not lose a game today and there will not be any blown saves today. Helping me dig into all of the big topics today. Kenny Takes were Made is in the house. Kenny, how we doing, brother? Doing good, Pete. Doing doing as good as we could be while being Martins fans. That's that's what I'll say. <laughs> the pain, <laughs> the pain is real, no doubt. We've got a ton to get into today. There are so many themes, storylines that we really need to dig into. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but reminder, guys, that this episode it's brought to you by Sports Card Investor. Download the Sports Card Investor app today and easily browse over six hundred thirty thousand cards from every sport. Hundreds more added each week. Available for free in the Google Play and Apple stores or go to sportscardinvestor.com slash locked on. All right, Kenny. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Where where do we start? There's just so much to get into with this Marlins team. We haven't spoken for a good couple of weeks, so there's there's a lot of themes. I want to start, though, right at the top. UK-friendly pain. I mean, it was a common theme in this series with the Phils. The Marlins starting pitching in two games particularly – went deep and well, and then it was just blown save season. Walked off in two of the games. Oh, boy, it just feels like malpractice, this kind of this closer situation. How are you feeling about this this whole kind of ninth inning situation? It feels very 2021, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, uh, it, there's a lot of things that, again, it, I, I won't take credit for any of it because it's Marlon's Twitter. I found this very, like, as a whole, like, we all were kind of on the same page going into the season. We didn't feel very confident in the bullpen. We didn't feel extremely confident in the offense. Like we Mm. felt like if this offense, it's still the same offense where if they catch their stride, they can be like an explosive offense. Right. But the bullpen was one of those things where I felt a little more confident knowing Solcer and Scott were, were on this rotate uh, in the bullpen. And for the most part, Scott's been good, but it's just, we, we don't have, the lockdown closer, you know, I think uh, it, it's a uh, Jadaniel fan club on Twitter. He tweeted, he's like, it must be nice being a Brewers fan knowing that every time they put in hater, it's just like, you just sit back, relax and enjoy your, your, your save opportunity. You watch it go like one, two, three, every game. And it's beautiful. Mm. And we just don't have that. We haven't had that for a very long time. I think we, we had this conversation on Twitter a while ago where it's like, when was the last time the Marlins had a legitimate lockdown closer? And it's hard to think because Steve Ciszek struggled. Uh, Heath Bell was garbage. AJ Ramos was inconsistent. Like it's, we, it's been a very long time. Maybe like Rob Nen <laughs> like was the last one, but uh, we knew this was going to happen. I, I wanted them to, they spent $0 in the off season on the bullpen. They didn't add mm. a single through free agency. They made some, uh, like savvy little trades for like Lewis Head and Tanner Scott and Cole Solcer and all moves that I was a fan of, but I just didn't think kind of like what they did with the offense. They didn't put the the icing on the cake, the cherry on top, like all of that. They they didn't get that final piece to push the bullpen over the edge or the offense over the edge, and and it's 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 kind of come to fruition. Like I I it's you can make an argument that if we had a lockdown closer, not even a hater, one of one closer, like just someone who only has two blown save rather than like seven, like the Marlins bullpen has, we would be at 500 right now. We would be, it would be a completely different look as we're approaching the trade deadline. It would be a completely different like vibe all around the team on Twitter, all of it, you know, so it's come to fruition kind of what we thought. They're five games back uh, of 500. So five games under, I guess. And honestly, I think it's legitimate for us to, to point to the fact that if they had a more reliable ninth inning guy, and they pitch just pitch better in the ninth in general. 
they, this would be a 500 team right now. It would. Yeah. It really would. Like, that is the true difference here where they'd be at least at 500, I think. Because this was the thing on, with Dan Greenley on, on Craig Mish's pods the other the other week and with Jeremy Tasche saying, you know, 10th ranked offense, third ranked uh, defense, 10th ranked pitching. I was like, well, how is this team at that point six games under 500? And, you know, they just... They've struggled to perform in the in the big leverage spots protecting leads. That's been the problem. It's been a big one. And uh, where do they go from here, though? I mean, Tanner Scott's obviously had a real run of it recently. Is it just you just kind of chalk it down and go, listen, one bad inning, Tanner Scott's still the guy? Or, they, I mean, I guess a few of the, the options are kind of disappearing. Salsa ended up on the 15-day, I think, IL yesterday. Yep. Um, obviously, the Bassman, we've had that already in 21, and that didn't work. So do you see Scott is now the guy? Moving forwards for now, I don't see a better option. No. <laughs> I don't see a better option. Like he, I, I, even yesterday, like yeah, it, it sucked, and obviously, like it just the Phillies just put together great at bats at the end of the game. They weren't swinging and missing on that slider that he he, he throws, and then mm. he good hitters will eventually punish a bad pitch, right? Yeah, it feels like we never are on the opposite end of that, but that's what the Phillies did. They they did it in when they took out Sandy in Game One. Stephen O'Kurt, everyone in the world, everyone in, in, in the Japanese league, everyone in the Mexican baseball league and major league baseball knew Stephen O'Kurt was going to come in and was going to throw a slider. Didier mm-hmm. Gregorius knew it. He sits on the slider. O'Kurt hangs his first slider right down the middle. Phillies tie the game. Yep. In this game, you, you have Scott who, who has a really great slider. I wish he threw more fastballs because he can pump his fastballs 98, he 99. And he shook off a fastball there on that last pitch. And he wanted to throw the slider, and he hung the slider. So I think even Fortes knew, like, this is a good opportunity to kind of go high and in here and, and get this guy to maybe jam into a ground out or something. We don't have to strike him out. Mm-hmm. He hangs the slider. Um, but as of, the, like, with that being said, I do think Scott is the best option. Like, I, he he misses the most bats still. You know, he, yeah. he can get out multiple ways. I, I want to see him be more competitive, like, and throw more strikes and – but obviously not sliders right down the middle, <laughs> but, but like you'll continue to paint those, those do those back foot sliders to righties, tail them away from lefties. Obviously he messed up yesterday, but I'd still ride with him. And I like to see him mix in more fastballs to, to show like the change in velocity. Cause when you're throwing guys eight, seven, nine sliders in a row, they're, they're just remembering that pitch and what it looks like, what it looks like, what it looks like, what it looks like. And eventually it's just yeah. like, it's just like, you're going to hang one. You're bound to do it. The best pitchers do so Scott is the option number one for me. Please just there's no reason to fuck with sorry. There's no reason to mess with what Bass has done uh in the seventh and eighth innings, even though yesterday he's pointing to the to the moon as the ball's like about to go out. Like, like yeah, and like I he this guy hits a moon shot and he's like, Hey, it's up there. And I'm like, Yeah, thanks, Bass. I think we all know. <laughs> Thank God it didn't go out. It would have been like the, the oh. perfect like peak of Marlin season so far, but it really would. It, 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 it's, it's better that we blew it in the ninth. I'm glad that we're getting exposed for our, our fraudulent bullpen. And the, and the offense is also very bad, too. So before, I know a lot of people get mad at me and make it seem like I'm only blaming the bullpen. <clears throat> the, yes, the offense is just as bad. That doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> oh, Mike, i, I got to be honest. Yesterday, it was it, it was funny. It was a funny game because, and I want to ask you about Dan Castano shortly because I, I yeah. think he's an ace. But anyway, let's park that for a second. And, <laughs> um but it was a funny game because you had Dan Castano doing his thing and all on everyone on Marlins Twitter was like, okay, this is happening. We've got, you know, Dan Castano's rolling. I think we forgot that the fact that the offense just did absolutely nothing all game. We were just kind of like, oh, okay, it's one nil. Uh, Dan Castano's dealing. Maybe we're going to win this one. And yeah. <laughs> it then suddenly dawned on me, just particularly the latter innings too, the number of three up, three downs in less than 10 pitches was, yeah. it was like three, four innings in a row, like five, six, seven, eight. You know, that was what happened. Just the offense just got absolutely nothing going. Kyle Gibson, he had the lawnmower out. He was just mowing down Marlins. It was just insane. This is Kyle Gibson. What yeah. the hell? I'm yeah. not having that at all. Like the offense was not good. And it was bailed out by the fact that Scott hung that slider. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, the bullpen. But it wasn't a good series for the offense at all. Like they didn't give Sandy the, the love either, really. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's a tough it's, one. It, that's it, that's that's the way like this game works, though, right? Like you have 
there's going to be days where the offense needs to bail out the, the bullpen. There's going to be days where the bullpen needs to bail out the offense or, or bail out the starting pitching or starting pitching bails out the offense, which we've seen a lot with like when Sandy and Pablo pitch. And that's why to me, it's just like, I, I understand the Marlins only scored one run yesterday. You know, Kyle Gibson was having a great game and, and he was mowing down the Marlins and, and that's going to happen. There's gonna, the, the best lineups in the world. The Dodgers will one day score one run and win a one nothing game or a two, one game. And it's because mm. their bullpen will keep them in it. Like the best lineups in the world will have bad games. I'm not saying that's what the Marlins are. The Marlins have, the Marlins offense has a lot of bad games. And when it, it, it just shows to me the way I, I picture like the front office thinking was them saying, Hey, look, we got Solaire. We got Garcia. Uh, we don't need to build a great bullpen because we are going to be like the Bronx Bombers. We are going to put a historically <laughs> good offense because obviously Ayo Garcia and his 541 OPS are going to carry us through the season. And it just hasn't worked out the, the way they wanted to. And, and a yeah. lot of people saw this coming. You know, I was someone that wasn't like I didn't frown on the decision to bring in Garcia. I didn't like the four years part of it. No. I didn't frown on the 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 decision to bring in Soler. Were they my ideal signings? No, I I, I liked Mark Canna a lot. I even was caping for Nick Castellanos, which like I gotta admit when I'm wrong because he hasn't been exceptional for the Phillies either. But the, the, like the, the, no one's bailing each other out. The bullpen's not bailing out the offense. The offense isn't bailing out the starting pitching. Like you know how hard it is to watch Shandy go into like the eighth inning and get a no decision. Like it's it's heartbreaking to see. It's heartbreaking. It's pain. Absolute pain. All right, well, let's hit the pause button a second, and it's time to let you know this episode, it is brought to you by Sports Card Investor. It's a new ad, brand new ad, and Kenny, are you a, are you a card guy? Are you a collector guy? I don't know if you are. I'm, I'm going through a phase where I'm a, I am a huge card collector right now. I'm enjoying oh. it a lot. It's oh, just hard because well, this... like the resellers and stuff, but I, I am enjoying it. This is it. This one's for you then, brother, for sure. So... Welcome to the world of sports cards. Reimagine the sports card investor app is the hobby's most powerful resource. Quickly check the value of your favorite cards. Find great deals and profit from the hobby you love. Available completely free in the Google Play and Apple's app stores. And the sports card investor app is a must-have for baseball fans. Kenny, if you're a Marlins fan, which you are, where, you, where are you focusing? Where are you going? Where, which cards are you trying to scoop up right now? Jazz Chisholm. Just, Jazz just give me jazz. And then if they, if they if they got any Yuri Perez's, Max Myers, or guys like oh. that, you know, I've I've bid I I won a bid a couple weeks ago on a on a Sandy Alcantara uh, signed rookie card. I'm very happy about that. Oh boy, I think that one's trending, no doubt about it. Yeah. This is it. Like we're using our our knowledge and insight here of the Marlins and the farm and looking ahead and going, hey, I can I can actually turn this into some profit maybe in the future. Yeah. Sandy Alcantara <laughs> cards, Jazz Chisholm <laughs> cards, Yuri Perez, Max Myers. I'm the same as you. I was checking out to see if I could spot any of them. Few Max Meyer ones knocking around for sure. So um, I've gone way off topic there, but anyway, that's uh, you know par for the course here, guys. So uh, what do you need to do? What do you need? Well, listen, there's no better time really as Marlins fans because the farm's loaded. That's what I would say. The farm is stacked. There's so so many arms, and there's so actually at the major league level, there's loads of studs too, Sandy Jazz. So there's no better time to kind of start collecting uh, these guys. So where have you got to go? Where have you got to go? You got to download the Sports Card Investor app today. It's available for free. I've already said that. It's for free. Download the app. It's in Google Play, Apple App Stores. Even if you want to go old school and go uh, go web browser, sportscardinvestor.com slash locked on. That's what you need to do. Get yourselves in there. Go and check out those Max Meyer ones because, well, listen, Kenny, the rotation. Let's, let's get into this rotation as well because Dan the Man Castano yesterday came in and did a job and then some. It was sensational. But all of a sudden, we are in a bad spot here because Lazardo to the 60 day. Eddie Cabrera comes up, makes three starts. The second, the third one, sorry, it looked like he tweaked something early to do. It looked like his knee, but actually, this uh, issue is, is, is an elbow problem, which is even more concerning, if, if I'm honest. So Cabrera down, Lazardo down, Elias is in IKEA. I mean, there's just a lot of, you know, where are we up to with this? And Pablo skipped his push back after a comeback to his wrist. I mean, that's another one that scares me a little bit. That's too. scary too, right? This because is the only, it, like... the only, the one thing I notice is, is just as concerning as the injuries are, the Marlins don't seem good at evaluating injuries. Because they said <laughs> they Lizardo's don't. like, Lizardo will be out for like 45 minutes and then he'll be back in. Like, he'll, he'll be ready. And now it's 60 day IL. You know what wow. I mean? Like, this Edward Cabrera thing just came out of nowhere. Like, I, I didn't know this was happening. 
Mm. Because they, in his last start, they were mentioning how he was like shaking his knee a lot, mm. and now all of a sudden his elbows hurt. Like I, it's I, I it's shocking, and now I'm scared because the Pablo Lopez they they pushed him back obviously, and knowing with how careful the Marlins are, I I, I I'm scared of waking up tomorrow and hearing like Elias Hernandez has been recalled and he's starting for Pablo Lopez. Like I'm just I'm not watching that game if that's the case. <laughs> the last thing I need to see is Elias Hernandez versus the Mets. We haven't played all year. I'm I'm not excited for that. But no, it, it, it is it is a, a little shaky right now. The, the 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 sequence of of injuries that's happened with Max Meyer. He's still not even throwing, if I'm not mistaken, in the minors. Edward Cabrera is out. So you're talking about two of your top pitching prospects. Sixto is throwing from like a hundred point five four like centimeters or something. I don't I don't know what he's doing. It, it it's going to be a lot of Dan Castano moving forward. Mm. Braxton Hopefully Garrett. Can, uh, Braxton Garrett, which credit to Braxton Garrett, he hasn't looked like atrocious, you know, but I, God knows eventually that's going to happen. And it's just the, the thought of Dan Castano, Braxton Garrett going back to back over the next like three weeks, two lefties throwing like 92 right down the middle. It doesn't exactly excite me. Like the, the best part about this team what the thing we were most excited about ever seen for the past like couple of years has been the starting pitching, and now I can't even get excited about that unless Sandy or Pablo's pitching. So, Trevor it, Rogers, Kenny, of, Trevor Kenny, Rogers. tell me about Trevor. What has happened to Trevor Rogers this year? I've I, I've no idea what's happening here. He he just has not had that same ability to put batters away. Every time no. I watch a first inning, it's like he leaves the first inning with 25, 26, 27 pitches. And it's just all downhill from there. Then he strings together one good inning, but then he'll walk a guy. And then the next thing you know, he's got 90 pitches by like the fourth inning. And that's like, mm -hmm. that's not, a, it's not a recipe for success. Especially when you look at what Sandy does, where Sandy's just constantly pounding the strike zone and getting guys out with eight inning pitches. I mean, eight pitch innings, nine pitch innings. And, yeah. and he's going eight innings every game, which is what we need. Pablo's also... I like Paulo because Paulo can do both. He can get you the strikeouts if you want, and he can go deep into games by pounding the strike zone. And Trevor Rogers just does not have that. Like he, he, he his that slider he supposedly has it, it just doesn't look that great. His changeup, he's he's not commanding it well. So people are sitting on his fastball. They're 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 ripping him apart. It doesn't look good. I'm not giving up on him, obviously, because there is potential there. A lefty throwing 97, 98 still has a changeup. But he doesn't have like a breaking ball like Luzardo has. You know, mm. Luzardo was pitching excellent, and Luzardo has an upper 90s fastball and a wipeout breaking ball, and he's able to make the best of those pitches. But Rogers just has not looked apart. Like it's, I was afraid of this. I was afraid mm. of this, but I didn't <laughs> think it would be like like this bad. I would I, I would be lying if I said I, I thought he was going to be this bad. But I it, it makes I, me sad. I think it, it definitely makes me sad too. I was like you. I, I was. I think. I was expecting progression actually this year with Trevor because it felt like last year the Marlins really did manage him and clearly it was a you know it was a dead year they knew it was dead in in June and you know they were always quite you know they, it, it was never the the leash with like Sandy has right now he's going 115 pitches there was yeah. none of that with Trevor it was like five innings 80 pitches okay that's you out of here I thought okay maybe the leash will be longer for him now and actually he's going to get deeper into games but like to your point the first inning over and over again, it is just a struggle every time. And you come out of there, he's 30 pitches in, laboring, not missing bats. And you're like, this doesn't look good again. It's been yeah. a real head scratcher all season long. Um, but, you know, as we look at things right now, Pablo's being pushed back. The bullpen session in advance of that decision was not good or not what they wanted to see. Like you said, it wouldn't be a shocker to get into New York and go actually Pablo to the 15-day IL or whatever now. Next thing is your rotation. Let me just – let's go down this now. You've got Sandy as the one. Absolutely. Sandy is the – no, no, okay. You've got Sandy as the one. Trevor as the two. Castano. <laughs> Braxton and Eliezer. That's your five. <laughs> That's your five. You had to have more than half of that like rotation is AAA. There, you're talking about the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimps, like rotation right there is what we're using. You might as well call it Brian Hoeing and have him start a game. Like he's been doing good. Like well, I, I, we're clamoring for him, point, I think. Yeah, <laughs> we're about to burn down the stadium because of how bad we want him. But it, it, it's not. It's not looking great. It's really not looking great. And when and then it's those aren't the only injuries because obviously like Brian Anderson, I didn't even notice that he was injured for like a while there. And then I was like, it's 
be seeing a spine specialist. I you know. know how, like that's you know, you don't know like dinged up you have to be to see a spine specialist. I like know. that's like 80 and he isn't seeing a spine specialist. And Brian Anderson is like 29 and he's seeing a spine specialist. Like Doesn't sound good. Joey Wendell, I, I think he's actually like resumed like baseball activities. I always love the 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 lingo they use for like the rehab assignments, baseball yeah. activities. He's like throwing a medicine ball off the wall. Like they 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 love using all these weird terms for it. You know, but they, they've they've been able to like stay afloat, I guess, with Luke Williams and and shout out Williams Asulio. Like he's he, he's done his job. He's been entertaining, funny looking, and he's produced. So I guess that's for that's sure. good. But uh <laughs> It's, they are it, they are small wins right now. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they look, and and they put together like a good string of 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 a week, right? But it's just like the way they lost these games. It's you know like the Astros game. De La Cruz, who's had a very bad year, by the way. He's he mm -hmm. puts together a great at bat, hits a home run, brings us within one, and then we just blow it in the next inning. Which it was who gave up that home run? Louis Head. Lewis Heads, Head gives yeah. up the, a, a, like a three-run home run against the Astros. Phillies game. We take out Sandy, which I thought was like a boneheaded move because Me there's too. no rhyme or reason to it. I, I didn't like the, the timing of the move. Uh, Stephen O'Kirk gives up a, a game-tying run. And then in the next inning, Anthony Bass gets walked off. We win the next game. Huge win. A game that I didn't think we would win. Shouldn't have won it. We, we end up winning. What happens next? Dan Castano comes out. He fills his role excellently. Shout out to the Cowboy. He does a great job. We're winning one nothing. It's a very nerve wracking game. Mm. Tanner Scott, two outs, walk off. Like it's just like they, they're ripping our heart. A chance. He's talking about being two less games under five hundred in a position where we can start thinking about deadline moves and maybe hey maybe now's the time to kind of like attack. Like we're we're limping and yet we're still winning games. We're 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 catching up to 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 the competition. And now we're not like you and it to add like salt to the wound. The Braves are on like a bajillion game win streak, and, and and the Phillies are are on these graphics. The hottest team in June. Oh my God, I'm like sick to my stomach watching mm -hmm. all these other teams. The Mets are like the greatest team in the world. The Braves are catching fire. The Phillies are looking good since they fired their manager Joe Girardi. Mm -hmm. And then meanwhile, the Marlins are just backtracking, backtracking. Like the Nationals are going to catch up to us soon. Like it, it really doesn't look good. It's. It's sad to see. It's sad to see. I I, I, I didn't want to have to be talking like this at this point in the season, but we are it's the only, Marlins after It's all. only the 16th of June. This is, uh, you know, it feels early, but nevertheless, right, you've mentioned it. We're talking about trade deadline, trade acquisitions. Um, just on the, off the back of the uh, these ads now, I want to get into that because there was a storyline that flicked up today that was a bit surprising, talking about a potential trade target for the Marlins. So all of a sudden, the Marlins, in the midst of being walked off in a terrible fashion, are now going, we're in buy now, we're in win now mode. We're going to dig into that one real shortly. But yeah. guys, reminder, this episode, it's also brought to you by LinkedIn. Speaking about recruitment, it is as the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. They help you find the people you want to interview faster. And here's the other, here's the other one. Here's the kicker for free. So create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job on the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the words that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So LinkedIn jobs helps you find candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn, 40 million, four zero. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free <laughs> terms and conditions apply Marlins and there's another one to, marlins are going to need to use that soon for i was for thinking that <laughs> we 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 may need to use that that tool i'm looking for the purple hashtag hiring frame on linkedin i did see kevin barral shout out to kevin if you're listening though brother i saw he's now entered linkedin i don't know what that means maybe it means nothing but um <laughs> <laughs> it's possible uh, we need to hold the horses because there's a second ad here in the second segment. They are they knew Kenny was on and they have given me three live ad reads. That's what they've done. They knew they knew we were going to bring the smoke and all the eyeballs to the show. So 
This episode is also brought to you by Built Bar. Our friends, our colleagues, our legends, Built Bar. This is mud pie season. You know Built are always coming out with amazing new flavors. Well, this time, Built has truly outdone themselves with a new mud pie flavor. And for the first time ever, Built is introducing the new mud pie flavor in both Mud Pie Bar and Mud Pie Puff. Try saying that fast after 10 beers. Not sure what mud pie tastes like? Well, if you're a chocolate fan, you better sit down for this. The new mud pie bar is rich, whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate and topped with cookies and cream crumble. Boy, oh boy, sounds sensational. If you're liking what you're hearing, and frankly, you should be, get yourselves over to built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15. That is LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Wow. <laughs> they're, they're testing me here today, no doubt about it. But let's, uh, Kenny, we saw this storyline come out though. All of a sudden, someone reporting, and I actually, I didn't know the reporter. I may have been from a, from maybe the Oakland uh, coverage or that circle, but I didn't recognize his name. Anyway, he's putting out that the Marlins are showing interest in Ramon Laureano at this point in time. Interesting action last night. There was a play in the ninth. Uh, Jesus Sanchez. I think maybe he had a skeleton in the closet from a Kevin Kiermaier incident early in the year, decided not to run in, rush in full-blooded and try and make the grab, kept the ball in front of him. However, that out that wasn't made ended up costing the Marlins there. Jesus Sanchez, just on that one firstly, I think he's been, I think he's done is what was asked of him. I think he's yeah. performed fine in center field. He is not a center fielder. However, I think he's faked it it pretty well and it hasn't been a complete show out there it hasn't been so i've got to say that first however what was your reaction on this ramon laureano rumor knocking around because for me it still is a clear need for the fish this center field as in a center fielder yeah clear clear need where's your head out with this one uh yeah so i think it was peter gammons who reported it and and shout out alex on twitter he made a joke he's like are we really still trusting anything like peter gammon says because like he's just hasn't been like a reliable source for a while now, but operating under like the let's just act like it's true. I'll take any upgrade to this team at the right price. You know, like mm -hmm. I I don't want it would be very Loria and Samson esque if we just started overpaying for a bunch of guys and then it didn't work out and all of a sudden we're back in a rebuild. Yeah, but um I I do like Loriano. I've been a proponent of his for for a while. I, I think he provides great defense. I think he's off to a slow start this year, and he still has like a weighted uh, WRC plus of 107 in like a very down year for him to do his first only like 27 games. Mm. You know, I think consistently he's been a great hitter in his career. Great to so some people, maybe pushing, but consistently <laughs> above uh, over 110 WRC plus. Fantastic, fantastic defense. The other day, there was a clip of him just yelling in the dugout, trying to I, get his team sorry. fired up. I love that. Me too. Like, that's what this team needs. I, I I don't mind that. A lot of people are joking that it's a road rage, road rage, and that's funny. That is a good joke because it might be. But uh, <laughs> um, at the same time, like I would take it in a heartbeat. Now, where I am, and like you said, Jesus Sanchez, he's done his job. I, I think he's been serviceable in the outfield. You know, I didn't mind the decision to not like die for that ball. If if maybe Garcia was backing him up more on that one. I don't mind him diving and just taking a shot at it because mm. he looked close to it. Like he, he almost yeah. misplayed it, stopping it because of how close he was to it. Yeah. That's a play. Maybe someone like Loriano makes, <laughs> but at the same time, uh, I think he's done a good job in the outfield. It's one of those places, the three areas of concern for me were just the offense in general, center field defense and the bullpen. Mm -hmm. the bullpen has stunk. The offense hasn't been great, but the center field defense, only like a couple plays this year, I think, where he's maybe like there, there's been miscommunication, you yeah. know, because he doesn't have that like experience of being like the, the leader. The center fielder is supposed to take every 50 50 ball, you know, like that's their job. And maybe that's with more time he'll get better at it. But I would take Laureano in a heartbeat, you know, like I, to me, the way this deadline, it, it's, it's a weird one because I, it's kind of the same way I treated last year's deadline, where I think they should be trying to buy and sell they mm. should be getting anyone that makes them better in the long run but they should be selling guys that are like i i, I said today soler and 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 aguilar are two guys that you can move for decent talent in return mm -hmm. 
Garcia, like you may have to like offer like a blood sacrifice to get rid of him because no one's gonna want that contract. It's just no. it's it's a very, very like unfortunate situation that they've gotten themselves into with how bad he's been and his numbers. Maybe maybe like if we all get together and pray really hard, he can put together like a really good two months and raise his batting average and OPS. And before the deadline, we can convince a team to take him like not even for a prospect, like just take him like here, like just give us like a yeah. player to be named later who's like 10 years old right now. I don't care. Like just get Joe Panic. Just get yeah, Joe Panic back. Yeah, I would take Joe Panic back. I swear to God. Like I, 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 if, I don't know how we're going to be able to get rid of him. I, I, I don't see it happening, unfortunately. Um, I said I want Lou and Diaz up already. You know, like, I, I think the, the two people to me that are like offensively are untouchable is Jazz and then Gary Cooper. I, and I know that like I may be jumping the gun. I I I try and exercise a little more patience. Everyone knows mm-hmm. I'm bad at that though, because I am takes were made. I am no reactor. But Garrett Cooper, like he's done everything. He's one of the brightest spots on the team. Like he's stayed healthy. He's he's proven all of us right. Where we all said, hey, when healthy, he's one of the best hitters in baseball, mm-hmm. and he's done that. So there's to me, it's if he continues this up until the deadline and and long after. I have no problem keeping him. Like he is your ideal DH first baseman guy. And Jazz is obviously you're you're not getting much better than Jazz at second base right now. Um Absolutely and I not. want Lou and Diaz. Lou and Diaz has been like having a really good year in AAA. I think it's it's time for him to get a shot at, at starting at first. And uh that's kind of where I'm at. Like if you can get Loriano, if you can get any upgrades, if I, I don't see the Pirates trading Brian Reynolds. I think the Pirates are like kind of up and coming. I don't see them shipping away. A lot of people are saying we should go after Bedner, the the closer of theirs. Like mm-hmm. I, I said, that once he gets here, he's just going to be like a fatter version of Anthony Bender. Like we're, we're God knows we're cursed. Like there's no way he's going to come here and continue and just save our season. That's no. it's not happening. So agree, it's agree with you all. It's a tricky it is. deadline. They're there's going to be teams that obviously call for Pablo Lopez or for Sandy and we have to turn them down. And there's going to be offers out there that we get. Like, I, I don't know. It's it's going to be an interesting deadline because I, it's just in the back of my head, this deadline will not be like a complete win for us because we're still going to have Avisario Garcia on our team. And that's the unfortunate part of it. You're right on that one. Avis Sale will be the immovable object in, the, in this one. He's like the way in chan of, of our position players. You know, like we're, you're gonna, they're gonna have to have a meeting, but like, can, like, should we just eat his contract and like take that L and and move forward? You know, but that's a lot of money. That's a lot yeah. of money to a just eat dumb. up like that. It's it's we're we're, we're gonna it's the same way the Mets have like a Bobby Bonilla day. We're gonna have an Alvisayo Garcia day for the next forty years trying to pay him off. Oh my days! It's gonna be a lot of bobbleheads knocking around. <laughs> Jesus, that's interesting. The the funny thing is, you know, I I get that. Like, it's it, it hasn't been good with Avi Garcia at all. We, you know, we saw it in the first, the opening weekend, the opening series. I was like, oh boy, this doesn't look good. Hasn't improved. Well, it's a little bit unfair. His numbers have been better in June, so that's good. He yes, had two run they, bomb they in Philly, so that's yes. good. So he is kind of loosely trending in the right direction. The other thing that I haven't kind of got my, you know, got a read on yet is what kind of a clubhouse guy is he? You know, like with Aguilar, where. Even if Aggie's scuttling, he had so much value in general yeah, yeah. because of the kind of guy he is. I don't think I've heard Avisel Garcia speak yet to the media or any. I mean, I don't know what his English is like. And this is partly it's a bit trickier this year, right? Because there's no Zooms where you kind of get to hear yeah. the conveyor belt of people on Zooms, where this is more like, you know, you've got to be in the clubhouse. But nevertheless, that being said, I haven't heard Avi Garcia, I don't think, speak all year. And I don't know what kind of a guy he is. If he, maybe he's just a quiet guy, but... I'm intrigued to understand what kind of a locker room guy he is. Maybe he's adding value in, in some ways. But listen, the numbers haven't been good. It was a 50 million you know contract over four years. Right now, it doesn't look good. We hope he turns it around. Like, clearly, we hope Avi Garcia finds something, whatever it is. I'm with you, though, by the way. Aguila, for me, no-brainer. Um, you know, I, I think there's been a little bit of friction with Aguilar and the Marlins for the past couple of years with some you know, arbitration discussions, some extension discussions. It hasn't gone well. The Marlins, I don't think, want to fully commit to Aguilar. And I think they'll look to move him um, maybe even before the deadline. Like, I think it'll be a little bit earlier than that. Same situation maybe as Jesus last year with Corey Dickerson. We need to clear the the, the playing time um, for for Lewin. 
So I think that happens. The whole is Soler situation, I think, as, as well, is intriguing. He does have another two years, but they're player option years too. Um, if he can, if he outperforms those deals, he may opt, look, to, look to opt out anyway. Um, he also may not want to stay in Miami for whatever reason. You know, it may just, he may think, actually, this this wasn't what I thought it was. So I think Soler's movable. Do you think Soler's movable at this deadline? If, uh, you know, for actually for a prospect back in return or a major league ready dude, or you know, where, where's your head at with him? It's, I'm I'm not too good with these. You know, this is a good question for like Aram. Aram's like really good at these like a like trade discussion type of hmm. type conversations. I I think he is 18 million is is his option for next year. That's a lot of money. Like for an annual value, like big dog. 18 million is what a lot of like like that's what like Nick Castellanos is getting 20, and like some people would think Nick Castellanos is a better player than than Soler. So. It's it's a weird situation where if he goes and let's say you trade him to another team and he has a second half like he had with the Braves where he's just like raking and carrying a team through the playoffs, there's a good chance that he opts out maybe I, and and tries to get a, a contract a longer contract with more money. Um, he he's done well. His numbers look like kind of what I expected them to be, like very low batting average. OPS is is kind of up there because he hits a lot yeah. of home runs. Yeah, but. Overall, like he's just not the he doesn't he's not the the straw that stirs the drink for this offense. Like he's not nope. even Duval last year. It felt like he was performed better with the Marlins than than Soler has. Like Duval seemed to be like an RBI machine for the Marlins, and he was playing some really really good defense. Mm. I I I think he's movable. Yeah, yeah, he, he's definitely movable because it's not a contract where where a team is like terrified of it. Um. I, I do think he's movable. I just, what you get in return is probably what changes. Like you're, you're probably maybe not getting like a top tier prospect for him unless he's like lighting the world on fire by the time he gets traded. Mm. But um, I, I do think he's movable. I just don't know what you get in return. I think it's more about clearing space and let's start getting some guys up here. Like Lewin, Blade is having a, a, a far better year than he did last year. The, the batting average doesn't look great, but his OPS is, is very high. He's walking at a great amount. He's striking out a little bit too much for me, like compared to what I usually like. But he he's hot. He got 13 home runs. He's looking good. And I think he's gonna be one of those guys where where I kind of like Jazz never had fantastic batting average numbers in the minors. And then he came up and now he's like one of the best second basemen in the league. Maybe we get lucky with Blade in, in a in a similar sense. That would be nice for sure. Here's the other one. So this is the other wrinkle for me, just thinking about guys that are that they'll be interesting. And the contract situation is certainly good. Um, Miguel Rojas, El Capitan. He's owed four and a half million next year, so it's it's not a rental situation. He's got four and a half million. Um, there's you know maybe some other offensive options that the Marlins may be considering elsewhere because Miggy Rowe, listen, that they've got to call it out defensively. He's still a leader, shortstop. He really yeah. is. Like it's yeah. so so good. And this is maybe on, it's the wrong time to have this conversation because he just hit the only run of the game as a home run in yeah. in, in Philadelphia. <laughs> um, so, and he had a good series with the bat too. But you know, listen, Miggy's offensively kind of you know he's a tier below some of those those other guys. He's a glove first guy, right? And he knows yeah. that. And he's but he's a big locker room guy. With that being said, there's a lot of value in that. A, a, a really sound defensive guy that's a big clubhouse guy. Um, you know, I. There's value in that. There truly is, and I, I, I'm interested to see what this deadline looks like, and whether there, that is even a discussion point. What, where do you sit on this one? There, there definitely is value in it, right? But I don't think teams hold the value of. Uh, let's let's like you said. What are his biggest values? Elite defensive shortstop. Mm -hmm. He's got a solid contact bat, but like you said, he's not an elite offensive shortstop. He's a peg below a lot of those guys because he doesn't yeah. have the power and the speed. But he is has good bat to ball skills. His leadership. Are teams really gonna like go crazy because he's a good leader in terms of trade value? I'm just talking terms and strictly trade value. Teams aren't gonna be giving up a top 100 prospect because like he's good in the clubhouse. You know what I mean? No, not a chance. I think he provides more value, and I know it's gonna seem shocking because a lot of people think I I don't like Miguel Rojas. I do. I think he provides more value staying on this team. Mm -hmm. And I've been, a, 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 again, I want Miguel Rojas to, like, be a Marlins lifer. Like, he's been here a very long time. Mm. 
he he does love this team. He does love this organization. He does want to win. And I think that he would be best suited in like a utility role mm -hmm. because he can play every infield position and at, at a very high level. I, he, again, he if if you go out and get another shortstop in the offseason and that guy gets hurt and you have to start Miguel Rojas for two weeks, you're not really complaining because that's a role that he can thrive in. I would retain him. I don't think what you're getting in return, mm -hmm. a prospect that's like a huge question mark, like you're not getting a top 100 prospect who's going to be a world breaker. Like it's like a, a sure shot prospect. I think he provides more value staying on the team. I want him to stay. I think as a leader in a utility role where he's playing, I mean, look at the Marlins. Look at how the injuries have fared for us this year, right? Yeah, he's playing every day. If he, if he, let's say we went out and got a shortstop this year and he was a utility guy. He would probably already be like a 70 game started or something with how the injuries have gone. Yeah. And I think Miguel Rojas is someone who has stayed healthy for like a large portion of his career, has great batting average tendencies. He's got elite defense. He's a leader mm -hmm. on this team because he's been here so long. I think you keep him. I personally yeah. think you keep him. I, it, it's it's just weighing out the pros and cons. Like I, I, I think he provides more value staying on the team. It's not like he's on some crazy contract that we can't afford. No. I, I, I'm, I'm keeping Miguel Rojas 10 times out of 10. Yeah, I, you make some really valid points and it makes a ton of sense for sure. I, I think the most likely situation is that Miguel Rojas stays with the Marlins, but I do think they get multiple calls on Miguel Rojas this yeah. deadline. And I guess let's kind of sit back now and think about things. Where Where is this Marlins team now in 22? Do you know what I mean? Like it's They're five games under 500. They're well adrift of the division. They're not winning the division. And no. to be honest with you, you know, we're we're about to go into a four-game series against, against the Mets. One of the best teams in baseball. <laughs> it's going to be tough. The Phillies are just about to get, I think, a three- or four-game series against the Nats, so they're going to pummel the Nats. You know, the Marlins, after this weekend, which, you know, you bought 21st, 22nd of June, they're going to be well adrift of the wild card. So where, where are they at in 22? It's, it's, I, I wish I could give a definitive answer, right? Like it's, it's cause it's not an easy answer. When you look at the, the wild card, they're like six games back or six and a half. And that's not like crazy with how much time there is left. Mm. And then you, you always hear the stories of like, look at the nationals when they won the world series. At one point they were like 11 games under 500 yeah. and they decided to hold on and they just went on a crazy run. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the Braves last year. The Braves season was like completely in shambles. And then they put together like a ragtag bunch in the outfield where they got four outfielders at the deadline with Rosario, Soler, Peterson, and Duvall, and they won the World Series. Like, Wild. It, are we that team? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I really don't think so. Not if the rotation's dead. I guess it, that's the yeah, thing, it, like, it, if it, the rotation's it, it, out. I don't think our current rotation with the injuries can, can sustain that. No. I'm looking, again, the Braves, what they did last year was they got a bunch of rentals, right? Mm -hmm. They ended up keeping Rosario, who it hasn't paid off for them because he's no. been hurt and horrendous when healthy. Correct. Uh, Duvall, I think, is having a – I haven't seen recently his stats, but I don't think he's doing great. He was trending. They let Soler he, walk he, he, to the He's Marlins. definitely moved it. Sorry, go ahead. They let Soler walk to the Marlins, and uh, Soler's been – you know, kind of what Soler has always been. Strikes out a lot. Isn't like a great situational hitter, but he, he hits very entertaining home runs. Mm -hmm. And then they – let Jock Peterson walk, and he's the one that's been the best. You know, Jock Peterson's actually been, like, killing it. I don't see the Marlins doing that. The Marlins aren't going to go and, and mortgage, like, their, their their farm for, like, a bunch of rentals and try and make a run at the World Series. They're not in that position. The no. Marlins operate with, like, with kid gloves. You know, they're, they're, they seem kind of tentative to make crazy trades. Um, I, I think it's just going to be a very similar trade deadline to last year. I think you're going to see guys on – I like what I said earlier, expiring contract guys or guys that are movable, they're going to get moved to give chances to guys like Lede, guys like Lewin Diaz, maybe a Peyton Burdick. I think that's what's going to happen. I, I I wish it wasn't. I wish I wish the Soler and, and Garcia signings paid off and we were in a situation where we're like a game above 500 and we're buyers, but mm -hmm. we're not. I, I just I, – I, I can't fault them for treating it that way at this deadline. I just wish they would have handled things differently before the season started. Me too. I think we all saw the flaws a little bit with this one. They It felt like they were operating a tier below or a couple of tiers below the top tier talent. I think, to your point earlier with Soler, and just this offense in general, apart from Jazz, that I think is a true difference maker, the 
the rest of the lineup is a little bit bland for me. It doesn't excite me. I don't, you know, back in the day when Stanton, doesn't matter how this team was doing, when Stanton was up there, I'd, I'd love to tune in and watch those at-bats every time because fireworks could happen. And I don't feel that way about this Marlins lineup. I really don't. Like, it's just a bit vanilla in some ways and yeah, lacks is, a bit of is. star-studded power. It really, it really does. And I think, you know, listen, a, a lot of these free agent signings for, for other teams haven't worked either. Like you said, Nick Castellanos is kind of struggling as well. There's been tons of guys that are struggling. So, you know, it's you, we shouldn't just point the finger at the Marlins and go, hey, Avi Garcia, that was a bum deal. Um, if it, it felt a bit too long, like I think the length was was the problem. I think if yeah, they'd yeah. gone, okay, it three is. years, 35 million, okay. But the four years, 50 or something, I think was the the, the factor there. Talk to me about catcher though, mate, because there's a there's a new man emerging there. I mean, listen, the Marlins made a big splash in the offseason. Jacob Stallings acquired, but Nick Fortes, baby, he is emerging, uh, not just with the bat, but behind the dish too. It yeah, has been all around. Whoa. He looks, he, it, it, it's, it's, it's that weird thing I'm telling you about, right? Like where I said Jazz. Jazz didn't really have like an outstanding minor league career. Like there's always the raw tools that stood out. And then the batting average was low. The strikeouts were high. Very like risk, risky prospect, and it's paid off for the Marlins. Yeah. And I'm saying try the same thing with Blade. Blade's numbers don't look fantastic in the minor leagues. Maybe he'll come up and 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 like feel more comfortable in a way, or me be more aggressive at the plate and make more hard contact. I don't know, and it'll work out. Nick Fortes, I've n- never seen a player who in the minor leagues was just not good at as a hitter. He had zero seasons over 100 WRC plus. And then he comes up to the major leagues and he's just like a really good offensive catcher. Like he's a really good hitter. I just don't get it. Like he doesn't strike out a lot. He's hitting the ball like very, very hard. Hard, hard contact. Isn't and it? then defensively, he's made very big improvements. Like he does, he looks like a competent catcher. Last year, you know, he, he looked like a position player playing catcher. Like, he looked like a second baseman playing catcher. Mm. This year, he does look more competent. He's calling good games. He's he's blocking wild pitches. He's he's framing. Yesterday, I, I tweeted out a clip of him framing a strike out there on a slight, on a curveball by Nance that was like a foot almost yeah. out of the zone. And it ended up on the Fox tracks. It, like, nipped the line, and then he framed it perfectly. And then you see Stallings, and he's like, like Stallings looked like dumbfounded. He's like, "How do you do that?" Like I would have <laughs> fell on my 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 behind if I tried to frame that. Yeah. But he, I, I, I don't mind. Like I said, Stallings is under control, right? For a couple more years, he's mm-hmm. not expensive. He's a leader. He's a veteran, and I, I think he's having like a down year. But he, you saw for a while there, he was driving in a lot of runs, like a, a week or two ago, and he started to look more competent at the plate. He had a huge home run, not too long in this series, right? Yeah. Against the Phillies. Like game, I, I think that's two. kind of yeah, that, that's what he is. Like he, I don't think he's as bad offensively as he's been. What's upset me mostly is like the framing. Like he, he just hasn't been like a good framer. And I thought that's one thing that we would be getting for sure from him. Um, I wouldn't be upset with them putting Fortes in as like a starter in the in the future. Like letting him see if this is like a legit thing because you know what you're getting with Stallings. I wouldn't mind giving Fortes like a trial run, getting more starts than Stallings moving forward. Because his ceiling definitely seems higher. Like it, you're, you're talking about a guy who had like 16 career home runs in the minors, and now he has six home runs in in the majors in like 30 games. I, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's he he looks comfortable doing it. So, I I, I would I would move forward with with Fortes starting. Honestly, um, I'm with you. It's been a stunning bright spot, Fortes. It it isn't like from a hitting perspective, I watch him hit and his ABs and the hard contact. Like he looks like a hitter. He just looks, he looks legit as a hitter. Yeah. But defensively, let's think back to 2021, the pain behind the dish that we all had as Marlins fans, it was just pass ball season. And that was just yeah. like the ongoing trend that hasn't happened. And so whatever we say about, you know, stallings, etc., the Marlins identified that problem. And they absolutely rectified it. So let's call that out. That what you know, the stallings of Fortes blend, which is you know, kind of it didn't start that way. Obviously, Peyton Henry was in there, but they definitely addressed that, and there hasn't been that issue. So that hasn't re- reoccurred, which is great to see. And stallings, um, I think, has been fine. I, I've been, I, I mean, he's catching most every Sandy game. Um, he's calling good games. I mean, listen, Sandy's taking his game to another level. I think stallings, you know, plays a role in that too. So. I'd been okay with that for sure. 
Talk to me about All Stars then, mate. Let's kind of wrap it up on All Stars here then, mate, because we've got, well, from a position player perspective, we got Jazz that is likely the leading light. Does Jazz make the All Star roster this year, in your opinion, at second base? I, I think he, he's a fan favorite, like mm. across the league. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, this is fan voting, and I think he's become that big of a star now. Yeah. He's being marketed by every, by, by, by Major League Baseball. Obviously, they want him to be a star. I think with fan voting, he can get in. I think his numbers, he's, a, he's in a slump. He is in a slump. Yeah. He's like 13 for like 54 or something. And like eight of those are home runs though. And if this is what a jazz slump looks like for the rest of his life, I'm kind of okay with it because mm -hmm. he's still hitting like rockets like far as hell. And he's, he's doing his job still. And I think he'll bounce back. It's kind of funny how his career has gone where he starts off really hot like he did last year. Yeah. gets hurt and then when he comes back from that injury it's like he's slow to get going again at the plate yeah yeah so i i hopefully i i, I hope he stays healthy and i hope he gets going again because we need him to and and i want to see him hit more contact and and get the k rate down because it's been going up steadily but i think he's our all-star i think garrett cooper deserves a shot but it is mm -hmm. fan voting, and like nobody knows who garrett cooper is let's be no, honest every no anytime chance. you see Gor garrett cooper on an article it's usually like a top 10 most underrated players list. Right. Yeah. And what underrated means is like, nobody knows you. Like they don't, they don't know who Garrett Cooper is. It's you, anytime you search Garrett Cooper on Twitter, 90% of what you're going to see is tweets from other fan bases. Like, Hey, we should go after this guy at the deadline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no, yeah. like he might not cost much because nobody really knows who he is. Like it's, no. but we as Marlins fans know how good he is for sure. So I would like to say he would make it, but he's not. And then Agree. of course, Agree. Sandy. Like Sandy, I, I I think Sandy should start in the in the All Star game. Like he's just been, he deserves all the love in the world. I'm glad that he's getting like push more. He was on MLB Network today. He's getting marketed, and it's not because he's like a flashy guy. No, right? Because he doesn't it, nowadays. Like, people love the the K per nine stats and the and the things like that. But Sandy is one of those guys where he doesn't even care about those stats. He just cares about going as deep into ball games as he can. And I love that, especially like that's God knows that's what we need, right? Because our bullpen really is not is. good, and they're getting stretched out every other game by bad starts, but from Trevor Rogers and other guys. But I, I would love to see Sandy go back to the All Star game. You know, a two time All Star. He, he, he is our like. He's what I want every Marlins player to be, in, in the sense where it's just like head down, work hard, perform, leader, get angry at the fact that you're like the other day him slamming the the the, the bench in the dugout. Mm. I love that. I love that fire. I love to see players as upset as I am about losing. Like I'm, I'm here at home watching this game and I see that walk off home run and I just tilt my head back and I'm like, I can't believe this is happening again. <laughs> and I'm just like upset for like 10 seconds. And then I'm like, all right, like, like it's the Marlins. I knew this was going to happen. Like, I love seeing that from Sandy. I love Sandy, like destroying the bench. And he's like, everyone, please stay the hell away from me because I'm not mm. to be messed with right now. I love that. Like, I, I love players that show that fire. And Sandy is like, what we have with Sandy and Jazz, I love that. Mm. Um, so I think those two, like, they have to be all-stars. And it's not just Jazz because of production, which although it's, it's gone down a little bit, I'm hoping it goes back up by the time the all-star game rolls around. And he's very, very popular. Sandy, like, you just can't look at Sandy's stats, his numbers, the way he pitches, and be like, yeah, no, you're not an all-star. Of course not. Like, that guy's the best pitcher in baseball right now. Correct. Like, I, I, that's look. I've roasted Kim Ang a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I will continue to do so. I will always. But the contract we have Sandy under right now is like it's a steal. No it's doubt, a steal. Because when you look at what other pitchers around the league are making, like Garrett Cole, and then you look at what Sandy's doing, like he's <clears throat> he's that, that, that's he he might have the biggest price tag in a trade of like any player in baseball right now, considering his contract. And I, maybe that's an exaggeration, but of any pitcher in baseball, I'm willing to say like his, his price tag in terms of consistency of what he's done, the, the control he has for the value, the, the, the monetary value on his contract. Like it would take a King's ransom to take Sandy away from my end. And I'll make sure if they, if they accept a bad trade, I'm, I'm locking him in the stadium and I'm not letting him leave. <laughs> for sure. I had the same thought actually about Sandy. I was thinking about it myself thinking, if you put all of the factors in, thinking about who's the most valuable pitcher right now, I think it's Sandy by some distance. Like significantly, it's Sandy because of the age and the contract and the performance and the all of the other bits. So I'm completely with you on that. Other 
Are the Marlins going to lock up Jazz? Do you think they go and just say to Jazz, listen, we think you're a superstar. You know, we've done it with Sandy. We've locked him up. Jazz, we want you to be a Marlin for however long. Because listen, there's been, off the back of this players meeting stuff, there's been various, not reports, there's been gossip and rumors is how I describe it more so, where, you know, you've got these tra- articles coming out. Oh, what would a trade package look like Look like for Jazz? And oh, the locker room hates Jazz and all this kind of stuff. So I think it'd be really interesting if Kim just said, Jazz, listen, we 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 love you. We want you to be in Miami for forever. Let's just get this conversation going. Let's make you a rich man. Let's get the Bahamian Prince locked in forever. Could you see that happening, you know, anytime soon with Kim and uh, the Marlins and Jazz? Um, could I see it? I don't know. I can't give a good answer there. I really can't. <laughs> I, I, I think that it, like when you see the way they handle like the Brian Anderson thing, where at the time, yeah, Brian Anderson Stacks was gone. performing and we kind of all said like, hey, pay BA, pay BA. And it, it turned out to be a good decision not to pay him yet. Yeah. Because he, he, he did have like years there where it didn't he didn't look right. He started off this year good and I'm hoping he comes back healthy and can mm-hmm. pick up where he left off. But you see how they treated it, right? I'm just talking about how the way they treated it, and they yeah. didn't go towards that extension. And then they 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 gave Sandy a chance to prove himself again. He did, made an All Star game, looked great last year, looked great, finished the year off strong as heck. Then they went into the offseason, got an extension done. Yeah, I think they want to see Jazz put together a full season and prove that through the ups and downs, he's still a star player. Because like I said, right now there's no doubt. He's in a, in, a, in a slump, and he's on one of those, like I said, up and down. He's definitely on the down right now. Yeah. How can he come back up from that? Because I think Jazz's floor is like what we're seeing right now. You know, like he's having a, a tough streak right now, and yet he's still hitting like 245. His OPS is like, I still think, over 800. And I think yeah. that's what his floor is when you think about the speed and the power combination. His defense has improved. It has. He can steal a, a ton of bags. He's an entertaining personality. The city loves him. He's slowly becoming a fan favorite, not just in Miami, around the league. With that being said, I don't know what a contract looks like for him, right? Because we haven't seen the consistent stretch throughout a full like 162 yet. I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I like it's, it's weird because I also don't want to see them like overpay and then he ends up being like a heavy buys where it's like, like oh god, what did we do? Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. think he's like that. Again, his his strikeout numbers looked better this year. Now he's in a in a slump where they've kind of gotten worse. But I I would like to see him bounce back. And if he does, and if he finishes the year in a great spot, I don't see why not you 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 approach it. At least start the negotiations, start the talks, and and see if you can get him on a Ronald Acuna type deal where it's like seven years, a hundred million. Like that would be great. That's what I'm saying. It's that kind of thing, right? The kind of between an Acuna and an Albi somewhere in that range, like long-term commitment for jazz. Jazz knows, listen, I've got 50, 70 million guaranteed hundred, whatever the number is. I mean, for me, if I was, if I was jazz, I'd, I'd entertain that. Listen, if someone said to me, Pete, listen, we want you to play baseball for the next seven years for this team, and it's going to be 75 mil. Are you in? <laughs> I'd be all in, brother, no doubt. Yeah, so yeah, and, I'm and interested. I guess it, it, it'll also be like Jazz is a very confident guy. Yeah. Maybe he maybe he turns down a deal and says, I'm betting on myself that I can go out and be even better next year and get more in, in a negotiation. Who I, knows? I agree. Right? Who knows? If we, we, it, it'll be his first time in, 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 in such a negotiation. Mm-hmm. He's 24 years old now. I'm sure if we're going to, we're not going to give him, let's face it. We're not like these teams. We're not going to give out a mega deal. That's like 12 years, 400 million. We're not. No way. No if way. We're trying to sign him. It's going to be a five or six year thing where we're trying to get him at 80, 90, 60, 70 million. We're trying, we're going to low ball. We are. Yeah. yeah. And then he'll name a price and then we'll meet in the middle and maybe we get a deal done where by his 30 year old or 31 year old season, he's in a position to go out and get another contract. Again, I'm not too good with these contract things, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. would love to see it get done. If at the end of the year we can revisit this conversation at the end of the year, if he's and if he if he proves us right and he's having a four win season, I would love to go out and and start negotiating some sort of deal with you. All right, well, for those watching the show, you probably realize now that I'm getting darker and darker by the minute. It is getting, you know, it's just after half past <laughs> nine here UK time. That the sun is setting here. No one can see me. I'm blending into the background. I should have thought about this in advance, but 
We've just hit the <laughs> hour mark. One hour. I did say this would likely be longer than 20 minutes. Um, we're done. Other than one final question for you, Kenny. And it is just try to summarize for me, maybe even one to 10. How much are you enjoying watching the Marlins in 22? This year we are, you know, we're mid-June. How, you, how have you enjoyed it thus far? I'll give it one to 10, right? Because there is highs and lows. I love watching Sandy pitch. I love mm -hmm. watching Jazz play. Garrett Cooper has been a treat. Nick Fortes is, 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 is I like watching him play catcher. Um, <laughs> Astudio looks funny when he runs around. Uh, the cons, I just, like, I get, like, a visceral rage whenever I see Garcia on my screen. Like, I just don't like the way, like, it's when, when you play bad, I just don't like looking at you. I don't like seeing your face. I don't like seeing your uniform. I don't like seeing your batting stance. None of it. You know, Jesus Sanchez has struggled a little bit. So that's kind of bummed me out. I want to see him get back to it. <sighs> the bullpen. God knows the bullpen upsets me. I'll go with like a solid like 4.2 out of 10. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like I, 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 I'm being honest. Like there was a streak of games there where I was barely watching. Like I was just watching the highlights because it was just like, like, like they're so – bad like every game was just loss after loss and, and yeah. stupid loss and bullpen blows this offense puts up one run it was just so bad and there was like, especially when like jazz was out a couple games i was like what reason do i have to even watch like i don't mm. like this isn't fun so i i you know, recently like the past like two weeks i've been watching more i've been watching every game and it's it's like after losses like the ones we've just seen it's hard to say anything like I'm, I'm being generous with that score. If I'm being honest, Pete, when Sandy pitches, it's like a nine point five. Sandy deserves oh, yeah. my attention. You know, like he deserves the respect. He is. Like, I'm not saying he's Jose Fernandez in personality and the way he's loved. Like Jose Fernandez is my favorite athlete of all time, mm -hmm. and, and he holds a special place in my heart. Like, but Sandy is in that level where when he pitches, I have to watch like almost out of respect because that yeah. guy, like, we can be zero and one sixty one in game 162 and sandy will pitch like it's a playoff game and i i, I will tune in to watch sandy pitch every single game so when he no pitches 9.2 all the other four days even for pablo i love pablo to death but it's like it's just not i i'm, I'm sorry i'm not like i i'm not counting down the hours to watch the marlins like i am in the first week of the year where it's like every day i'm like oh yes the marlins play today come on another chance to bounce back mm -hmm. i'm at the point where it's just like let's see how we manage to screw it up today Oh boy. Oh boy. I love the fact we've gone one to ten. How much are you enjoying it? And you've introduced decimals into it now and everything. We've got a decimal point, you know, 4.2. That is a new one for me for sure. But uh I uh, I I tend to agree with your analysis. It, at times it hasn't been fun, uh, to be honest with you. There's just been the, the problem is with this whole situation is it it was just something that was foresaw. You know, you were looking at the start of the season, you could see the, the problems that weren't addressed. And lo and behold, they've kind of continued to show their head. So nevertheless, uh, this episode, I would want to 10, give it a 10. So, uh, you know, absolutely. there we go. Absolutely. Absolutely stunning. This has been like a Sandy Alcantara start. The boys, yeah. are just, they, you know, this is 150 pitch count, this one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Kenny, for those that aren't watching, and some people, uh, you know, be listening to the podcast, obviously, they haven't got the graphics to work with. So if they aren't, and they aren't following you, and maybe they haven't clocked on to this, thinking, Kenny, I don't recognize that guy. Who are we talking about here? Tell them where they can find you on Twitter, brother. Takes were made with an underscore at the end. I've been begging Twitter to let me drop the underscore, but I can't. Uh, <laughs> that's where you can find me. That's the only place that matters. Um <laughs> And that's it. That's the, that's the only place you got to find me. I, I have a Dolphins podcast that we barely do since we're in the off season, but you'll see that in my bio on Twitter. Just find me on Twitter and that's that's all that matters right now. There you go. I'm sure that Dolphins one will be firing up pretty soon, I guess. We're going to be back around a football Probably season. Like next you know, week, I think we're going to record an episode and then we'll, we'll get back on our schedule. But yeah. right now, there's no point in talking football. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one anyway. It's going to be a big year for the Dolphins. But anyway, uh, that is us done. Thursday episode of Locked On Minus. Like I said, guys, it was going to run long. The, run, the, the runtime was long. It's 150 pitches from Sandy Alcantara. Kenny, <laughs> takes were made. Peter Pratt, out of here for Thursday episode. I am back tomorrow, and we're going to be previewing in depth the Marlins Mets series. I'm going to have someone on to help navigate us and help us bring us up to speed with the 2022 New York Mets. I think there will be a UK 
uh, UK vibes. So wait and see. Guess TPC, but for sure we're going to be previewing game one. No idea who's starting for the Marlins. Let's hope it's Pablo Lopez, but stay tuned for more injury news. In the meantime, guys, enjoy the rest day. The Marlins will not lose a game.